So as mentioned last time, the concept we want to consider next is the linkedness and subdivision. So we all know what subdivision is, and <coughs> linkedness is mentioned at the end of last lecture. Let's formally define it. So we say a graph G has, I mean, if it has at least two K vertices, and we say that is k-linked if for every choice of distinct vertices <coughs> a1 to ak and b1 to bk there exists pairwise disjoint passes p1 to pk such that pi connects between ai and bi <coughs> so in general k connectedness and k linkedness are not same so for example i mean Okay, one K connect, one connected and one linked are same, but in general, for larger K, it is not same. For example, if you consider a cycle, this is two connected. So two connected means that for any set of two vertices and another vertices, we can find the two passes. So which is I mean, which is, which can be proved from the connectedness. So, if you take, say, this two and this two vertex, and then we want to connect the, I mean, vertices from the blue one to red one, then you can find this path and this path. However, if you designate the number, so let's say this is A1 and this is A2, and then what we want to do is we want to connect A1 with B1 and A2 with B2. Then no matter which path, so either this path we have to take between A1 and B1 or the other one, I mean, there is no way that you can take a I mean, another disjoint path between A2 and B2. So this is one linked, but not two linked. <coughs> then, natural question is that, okay, so we know that two linked we know that it is easy that the k-linked graph implies k-connectedness. But uh, the other way doesn't hold. The natural question is that, is there like some number, say, some fk connectedness implies the k-linkedness? Is there some function f which satisfies this? That's, I mean, what we want to consider. So, when k equal 2, I mean, it's known that uh, every six connected this graph is two linked. And this is best possible because there exists a five connected graph which is not two linked. So for example, if we consider this graph <laughs> so it's not so difficult that uh, 
I mean, it's not so difficult to check that this is actually 5 connected. And if you say this is A1 and A2 and B1 and B2 and whatever, I mean, path we take from A1 to B1, this connects the upper part and lower part and you cannot actually find any other passes between A2 and B2. <coughs> so this 6 is the best possible. More generally, we can actually show that this Fk must be at least 2k minus, I mean, 1. Because if G is, say, 2k minus 2 connected, but not 2k minus 2, not 2k minus 1 connected. Then, you take a vertex cut with uh, 2k minus 2 vertices. V1, 2, V, 2k minus 2. And you let these vertices as a1 to ak minus 1 and b1 to bk minus 2, uh, bk minus 1. And because this is a vertex cut, there are two different components once you delete this. And write ak here and bk here. <clears throat> then once we find the uh, I mean passes between these vertices in any way, now all the vertices in this vertex cut is already used. So there is no way that you can find the uh, I mean disjoint path from AK to BK. <coughs> so we know that I mean if this FK exists it needs to be at least 2k minus 1. And our goal is there exists this fk, which satisfy, which implies the k connectedness. And what's the possible strategy? One of the idea is that if we can find some useful structure, let's say complete graph. Let's say we have a large complete graph here. Then, no matter what a1 to ak we have and b1 to bk we have, if the graph has enough, I mean, enough connectivity, and we find some passes between this set a to this x, say x is the this complicated structure, let's say large complete graph, and this is b, say you find another passes from B to here. And if this complicated structure X is large complete graph, then no matter how, I mean, they are connected in this red part, let's say, you can actually, because this is complete graph, you can manually connect these two so that the a1 and b1 are linked and this and this and this and this and let's see this and this and in this manner <coughs> by using just one edge in this large complete graph but we don't know whether the graph even have a large complete graph so instead, what we can consider is some, I mean, some other structure, which is complicated enough to do this rerouting, this connecting thing. <coughs> One of a good candidate for, I mean, be used as a, this rerouter is a subdivision. 
of complete graph. So here we use only one edge, but instead, I mean, if we, as long as we can use some passes, it is okay. If this happens to be a complete graph, and then all of these vertices, which are the end, end point of the, this blue path and red path, are, happen to be the branch vertices, then it's easy. The exactly same argument here works. And even if these vertices are not branch vertices, there are some ways to overcome that. So our goal is to find the subdivision of complete graph. Then we can also ask the question, I mean, what condition? So here, we want to show that uh, if G is highly connected, then you want to find K-linked. Can we instead find the uh, subdivision of of the complete graph in G. If G is highly connected, can you find uh, some large complete graph, I mean subdivision of a complete graph in G? <coughs> so that's our first goal. Can you prove that uh, if G is highly connected, then G contains a subdivision of a complete graph? or more general, subdivision of a given small graph. So it's known that uh, it's proved by Mother and Thomasen. That that is the case. Even the high connectivity is not necessary. The weaker condition is su sufficient. Weaker condition on the minimum degree is sufficient. If F has an M edges and it has no isolated vertices, and G is a graph with minimum degree at least 2 to the M, then G contains an F subdivision. And later, this 2 to the <coughs> m is improved. Uh, but, okay, let's talk about that after proving this theorem. So, so we want to prove this theorem. So basically, how we want to do it is we want to induct on this m. So we want to find, say, subdivision of F, which looks, say, this way. Then how do we do it is we find one path first, and then another path, another path, another path, another path, another path. So that if this is F, this is the subdivision of F. So for that, I mean, you, can, you, ha you must be able to find the I mean, subdivision of uh, graph with one less word, one less edge, one less edge, one less edge. So we want to somehow use the induction. Then once we have a subdivision of f minus one edge, then now we want to find the path between these two. But we want to find the uh, path outside because I mean we don't want to use the same vertices in here again. I mean same. Like same vertices inside of this subdivision again. So we want to make sure that this path is disjoint. So we want to find the path outside. <clears throat> so for that purpose, the following lemma is motivated. So what you want to show is if minimum degree of G is at least 2K, then G contains to disjoint subgraph G prime and H. So G prime will be some graph that we want to find the F minus subdivision of F minus E, and H is some graph that we want to find the path 
which will play the role of E. Such that the following holds. First, G prime has minimum degree k, at least k. Two, each vertex of G prime has a neighbor in H. Three, H is connected. <coughs> because later we want to use induction on M. The first condition with the induction hypothesis will give us a subdivision of F minus 1H here. And then second condition ensures that we can find the H here and H here. And third condition will ensure that we can connect this using edges inside. So we can I mean, extend the subdivision of f minus n and h into a subdivision of f. So, we want to first prove this lemma. <coughs> so, proof. So, for this, I mean, if g is not connected, we just take uh, one component. And inside the component, if we find g prime and h, then that's already good for us. All the conditions are satisfied. So, we assume. G is connected. And for a subgraph, say H prime of G, we consider G mod H prime, so G contract H prime, which is obtained from contracting or edges of h prime. So here, contraction is, I mean, in our sense, u and v. If you contract it, then you have new vertex and w, we have only one edge. I mean, sometimes we contract this and then we leave the multiple edges, but I mean, in general, we say contraction, then the resulting graph is simple. <coughs> so, now what we want to do is we let H be a decimal subgraph. such that G contraction H has at least K times the number of remaining vertices, many edges. So, First, we need to check that uh, such H actually exists. Because we know that minimum degree of G is at least 2K. And every one vertex graph, H satisfies this property. Sorry, maximal connected subgraph. So, because if you don't contract any edge, then still we know that this minimum degree ensures that there are at least k times the number of vertices, many edges. So, every one vertex graph satisfies this. So, there exists a subgraph satisfying this property. Among them, you choose the maximal or maximal one. And let G prime be the subgraph induced by the vertices of outside H 
that have neighbors in H. So watch the picture. We have this H. And then in G, we have some vertices which has neighbors in there. And that's actually G prime in this G. <coughs> Here, once you contract H, then this H is just one vertex. It becomes just one vertex. Let's say this is the vertex. And G prime is here. And then we have this. So why do we consider such condition that uh, this is maximal subgraph such that contraction leaves a uh, dense graph, graph with many edges? Maximality of H means that uh, if we contract one more edge, then the number of edges in here decrease. Decrease with more ratio than K. But once we contract an edge, then many, many edges disappear. What does it mean? When you contract this edge, if this is the case, that uh, its neighbors are all disjoint, then contraction, you have you used to have uh, seven edges, but now you have six edges. So only one edge disappear. But the significant number of edges are missing only when they have many common neighbors. In this case, if you contract it, then you only have three. So used to have seven and now three. So contracting this blue edge will make the number of edges in this contraction much smaller, means that uh, this two vertices has a uh, many common neighbor, meaning that the uh, inside of this G prime, this vertex has considerably high minimum degree. And that applies to every vertex in this G prime. So this choice makes sense to actually enforce the first one. And second one is trivial, and third one is from the definition. So this is the intuitively right choice to consider, I mean, to get such graph satisfying these three properties. So now, we need to actually verify those are true, but the two, three are automatic. We only need to verify its minimum degree in G prime is at least K. Each vertex X in G prime actually collapse onto edges from a vertex to the single vertex, this vertex, representing H in this G minus, I mean G mode H. Wait, uh, yeah, sorry, I was writing something and I skip one line when <laughs> writing the writing down. Let me write it again. So each x in this g prime by definition it has a neighbor. Why? which is in Vx, Vh. And if we 
contract x y as well as well as h then the edges incident to g prime so in g prime if there is this edge that collapse onto edges from say g prime to the single vertex representing h in g slash h g mod h so what it means that if there is an edge between x and g so then in this picture what we have and if this x is i mean x y x is i mean if we contract this blue edge then the edge between g and x are now collapsed into the edges with uh, this edge and this edge are collapsing into one edge so there used to be this one edge and one edge now it is uh, just one edge instead of two edges in this graph. <clears throat> and the edge xy also disappear. And other edges of this G contract H remain in G mod H union X Y. So how many edges do we use from this to this? So contracting so H X Y loses at least the degree of this vertex X in G prime plus one additional edges. <coughs> but the, what's the maximality implies? So we assume that the uh, H is the maximal subgraph such that uh, once contracting it, it has at least k times number of vertices many edges. So number of edges in G mod H is at least k times number of vertices in G mod H. But if you also contract XY, and this no longer satisfies, so this is sales. I mean, smaller than k times this, which is k times g mod h minus k. So it means from this graph to this graph, the number of edges must be before it was at least this much, but now it's smaller than this. So we should lose at least k plus 1 edges. The maximality of h implies that contracting xy plus at least k plus 1 edges. Thus, this must be at least k. And this holds for all x in g prime. So we know that the minimum degree is elliptic. So this finishes the proof. Now we have this lemma. With that, now we can prove this theorem by using 
this approach. <coughs> so we want to prove the theorem, this theorem by Mother. So we use induction on M. For the base case, <coughs> if M is 1, then we want to just find the one edge in G, then that's enough. So minimum degree at least 2 is more than enough. For M at least 2, the previous lemma there is this joint subgraph H and G prime in G such that H is connected and G prime has minimum degree at least 2 to the m minus 1 and every vertex of G prime has a neighbor in G prime. <coughs> oh, no, sorry, neighbor in H. So we have H and G prime. Now we want to take a slightly smaller graph, f, f prime, which is slightly smaller than f. And how do we take it is if there is some edge E in F whose deletion still leaves a graph with minimum degree at least one, then let F prime be F minus E. And if there is one vertex whose deletion makes the graph f minus x having minimum degree at least 1, and it has degree 1, then let f prime be f minus x. If neither of the case holds, we know that f is a matching. And let f prime be the graph taint from f by deleting two adjacent vertices. So we have three cases. So f prime is uh, either graph we obtain from f by deleting an edge, or deleting a leaf, or deleting a component with two vertices, two adjacent vertices. So by induction hypothesis, we can find the copy of f prime in G. So let J be on f prime subdivision in G prime, which we obtain from induction hypothesis. We have J. If we have the first case, in case 1, meaning that the f prime is f minus on edge, then we add a path through h connecting the corresponding vertices of J representing the 
endpoints of E. So here, I mean, we have a subdivision of F prime, which is a J. And then let's say these two are the, I mean, branch vertices, which represents the endpoints of E. And because it has a neighbor in H, neighbor in H, and H is a connected, so we can add this path to obtain a subdivision of F. And in the other two cases, we can do in the same way. I mean, if F prime is F minus X, where the X has degree one, then in J, you find the, I mean, branch vertex which corresponds to the unique neighbor of X and and you add one edge to H then this is now a subdivision of F and the third case is that if we have a J here and f prime is f minus uh, two. I mean, vertices, two adjacent vertices, which is a component. Then in H, you just take a one edge in here, and then you add this. In this specific case, f prime is a pair matching, so this is also matching. You just add this two. Then you get the desired subdivision of F. So this proves this mother theorem. <coughs> then next question is how good this bound is. Quantitatively, is this 2 to the M, I mean, enough? Let's just consider the case where the F is a complete graph on K vertices. Then the above says that minimum degree, at least 2 to the k choose 2, give us k sub k subdivision. And Comroche and Semoretti in 96, and Bolobashi and Thomason, and Thomason. 89 proved that if minimum degree is some constant times k square, then you can find the kk subdivision. And this is actually best possible because if you take a complete graph on k square, I mean, let's just say k choose 2, let's say r and r, k r r, so both sides has r vertices, and let r be say k choose 2. <coughs> In here, I mean, if you want to find the subdivision of complete graph, then it's not difficult to actually sh sh check that the, all the branch vertices must be one side. Let's say minus one. And all the edges, I mean, all the paths representing the subdivision of an edge in complete graph must be of this form. So we need to use at least k choose two. If we want to find the subdivision of complete graph on k vertices, we need to use at least k choose two vertices here. But r is one smaller. So, I mean, in this graph, even if we have minimum degree bigger than half times, say, k choose 2 minus 1, but no kk subdivision. So this shows that this quadratic bound is best possible up to constant. So now we are ready to actually prove the theorem that we wanted to prove. 
which was that uh, there exists uh, some function f such that fk connectedness imply k linkedness. We will show that in the next video.